Anti-diarrheal drugs. Diarrhea is basically the passage of unusually loose or watery stools at least three or more times in 24 hours. On the basis of onset, diarrhea is divided into acute and chronic diarrhea. The acute form lasts for about two to three days, while the chronic form can last for more than two weeks. The acute form of diarrhea can be caused by infectious agents and the chronic form is basically due to more serious and chronic conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, malabsorption syndrome, etc. The chief approach to treatment of acute diarrhea is that to rehydrate the patient because the chief mortality factor in acute diarrhea is dehydration. While in chronic diarrhea, our approach is to find out the cause and treat that. Now for the management of diarrhea, we do two things particularly. One is the non-specific therapy just for symptomatic treatment and the other is specific therapy to find out the cause and treat it. The non-specific therapy include oral rehydration therapy and anti-motility and anti-secretory agents use. The main anti-motility and anti-secretory agents used are opioids, alpha-2 adrenergic agonists, octreotide, and resicadotril. The oral rehydration therapy is mainly used to treat acute diarrhea to treat the water and electrolyte balance. It is a simple, safe, and cheap method. The oral rehydration solution contains NaCl, potassium iodide, sodium citrate, and glucose. The NaCl and potassium iodide restores the losses of sodium and potassium. Sodium citrate being a base corrects the acidosis, while sodium and glucose are co-transported in the ileum by sodium glucose co-transporter. As a whole, it decreases stool volume and vomiting. It is effective in cholera. And if severe dehydration is there, then we need to administer IV fluids. There are new forms of uh, cereal-based ORS in which rice boiled powder is used instead of glucose. Zinc should also be administered because it is necessary for epithelial regeneration that might be destroyed in chronic inflammatory diseases of the gut. Now the first drug that we can use as anti-motility and anti-secretory is actually opioids. They are the most effective prescription drugs for chronic diarrhea. If you remember from the opioid analgesics topic, one of the chief side effects of opioid analgesics was constipation. So we use the, that effect here. One bad thing about this is its addiction capability. It has two actions. One is central and the other is in the enteric nervous system. Two actions in the enteric nervous system. One is to uh, decrease acetylcholine release from enteric interneurons and motor neurons and secondly it also uh, inhibits the secretomotor activity of the neurons by decreasing uh, chloride secretion and thus little wa water follows the chloride. The three chief drugs used are codeine, diphenoxylate and loperamide. Codeine has the potential to be abused and so has diphenoxylate. Diphenoxylate is even banned in some countries. Thirdly, loperamide is related to pethidine and it is actually potent than morphine. It acts uh, with the mu receptors in the gut, decreasing GI motility, increasing sphincter tone and the good thing about this is it has no abuse potential. It also decreases secretion and acute and chronic diarrhea can be managed with this. The alpha-2 receptor agonist that is centrally acting alpha-2 receptor agonist used is clonidine. It has two actions mainly, anti-secretory and anti-motility. The side effects are basically depression. Depression is there due to decreased norepinephrine release. We know that alpha-2 receptor is an autoreceptor. It also causes hypotension due to decreased sympathetic outflow. The use is to treat the diarrhea due to opioid withdrawal and that associated with diabetic neuropathy. The chief effect is by decreasing the anti-secretory activity actually. Next drug that we can use is octreotide. It is, it is actually a somatostatin analog. It inhibits 
growth hormone secretion and apart from that to our interest here it also inhibits the release of serotonin vasoactive intestinal polypeptide gastrin insulin etc and it can be used in diarrhea in diabetics uh, hormone secreting tumors that causes diarrhea the the secreting tumor might secrete serotonin that might act, act on the 5-HT4 receptors and AIDS associated diarrhea The next anti-motility and anti-secretory agent used is Prasicodotril. It is actually a prodrug which is then converted into an encephalinase. Now we know that encephalins are endo endogenously produced opioids and if uh, the enzyme which degrades these uh, opioids is degraded itself then encephalins con concentration will increase in the intestinal mucosa and will act on the mu receptors causing decreased motility and decreased secretion just like the opioid analogs it can be used in acute secretory diarrhea by e coli etc and side effects include drowsiness mainly now lastly we can provide a specific therapy if there is a chronic infection and it can be different for different organisms that are associated with diarrhea such as shigella salmonella e coli uh, and amoeba histolytica etc and the chief antibiotics used are ciprofloxacin, doxy, cycline and metronidazole. If not then others can also work. That's all about anti-diarrheal agents.